Peace to everybody tuning in. My name is Brother Cephas. I have again two readers today. My first reader is Brother Johnny. And my second reader is Brother Chris, who will appear momentarily. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful day today. We actually attempted to go street Christian, but it wasn't according to the Lord's will today. And, this, and the weather's not looking so pretty either. That's probably why. But the title of today's class, because we decided that We'll do a class instead, you know. This gospel guy get preached one way or another. Whether it's in the streets or it's on Facebook Live. The title of today's class is called Which Resurrection Will You End Up In? The first or the second? It's a really good question because for the most part, people don't even know that there is a resurrection to look forward to. You know. We got to understand that when Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't for us to, you know, yes, he died for our sins, that we may have eternal life, which we're going to read. But it wasn't for us to die, go into the grave, and then end up in heaven. Instead, Adam, he brought death into the whole creation because he sinned against God. Talk to that tree, Satan. Now, from that point on, every person is meant to die. Where we're held to the fire to where we have to die this physical death and then potentially end up in this lake of fire. But the Lord, however, when he lived without sin and he was blameless, he took death off the table. He gave us a shot back at everlasting life. But everlasting life, brothers and sisters, is predicated on a couple things which we're going to look at. Of course, you have to have a faith in Jesus. Don't get me wrong, you have to believe in Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, there's no chance of salvation. But, once you believe in Jesus, you have to ex you have to exhibit that faith, one way or another. James chapter 2, and I always quote this, it says, Faith without works is dead. So, let's turn over to Ecclesiastes chapter, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. It's going to be offered in Scripture. And we're going to learn about this event that takes place to all men, regardless of who you are. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 9, we'll pick it up at verse 2. When you get there, you go ahead and read. All things come alike to all. Actually, yeah. It says, all things are come alike to all. Go ahead. There is one event to righteous and to the wicked. So regardless of how well you lived your lifestyle, and a great example of that is Abraham, the father of our faith. You read in Genesis chapter 26, it said that he kept the commandments of God. He kept his laws, his commandments, his statute. He obeyed the voice of the Lord. But guess what? He's going to be getting the same result as someone who is wicked. And I'm no judge, but not all of us have lived a perfect life. If that was the case, if we're perfect, then we don't need Jesus. But evidently we do. But it says, things are, it says, all things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and to the wicked. Go ahead. To the good and to the clean. To the good and to the clean. So it's giving you someone who's upright. For example, like Job. He was upright and perfect. He hated evil. Go ahead. And to the unclean. To him that is that sacrificed it. And to him that sacrifices not. So to the clean and to the unclean. Like I said, it don't matter if you're good or evil. Not only that, but it says to him that sacrifices and him that sacrifices not. So you could be like even according to this law. If you are sacrificing like it shows you in the Levitical priesthood, even if you're not, no matter what, there's gonna be something that happens to you in a bit. Go ahead. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. So, no matter, like I said, this is basically breaking it down so you can understand something, brothers and sisters. It don't matter how righteous you were in your lifetime. It does not matter how wicked you were in the, your lifetime. Go ahead. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. So, no matter how you lived your lifestyle, everybody is appointed to come across this one event and it's considered an evil among all things that are done under the sun there's nothing worse than this event brothers and sisters go ahead that there is one event unto all ye also 
The heart of the sons of men is full of evil. Go ahead. And madness is in their heart while they live. Yeah. And after that, they go to the dead. So it says, there is this is an evil among all things that are done under the sun, that there is one event unto all. Yea, also the hearts of the sons of men is full of evil and madness is in their heart while they live. So this whole lifetime, the nature of man is to be wicked. It is to be wicked. Now you got people who do stand out above the crowd, and they are righteous to some extent according to you know how the Lord measures you. And at the same time, there's people who are wicked. But guess what? No matter how well you live your life, it says, and after that they go to the dead. Like I said, Adam brought death into the whole creation, brothers and sisters. It don't matter if you are good or bad. You are born into this world and you are predestined to die. That's the end result. But Jesus, and we're going to learn, he is the one who's going to get death off of you. Keep going. For to him that is joined to all the, all the living, there is hope. Now keep in mind this. Even though we know that we are predestined to die, Guess what? If you are living right now, you can breathe the breath of life that the Lord gave you. There's hope for you. Why? Well, go ahead. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Like you got hope because you can do what is necessary to get this ultimate death off of you, brothers and sisters. And that's going to coincide with the first and second resurrection that we're going to be talking about today. But it says, it says. For him that is joined to all living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Like, you got the lion, he's the king of the jungle. You see a lion, you want to, like, no one want to mess with the lion. But then you have the dog, you know, playful, friendly. No one really is scared of it unless it's a pit bull and you're black. Regardless of the point. But, it says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Like, you could be a dog and living. And it's better for you. Why? Because there's a chance that you can still do what is necessary, like I said, to get this ultimate death off of you. Because that lion, hey, once he's dead, once you're dead, there's nothing. Like, there's no dying going automatically sent to heaven, brothers and sisters. What it is, once you die, you go into the grave and you wait there. And we're going to read about that. But... You want to have this, you want to be living to do what's necessary. Let's turn over to our next scripture, which is Matthew chapter 5. Is that Matthew chapter 5? No. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Because once we die, there's something that comes that we're going to wake up to. There's something that we're going to wake up to. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to read one verse there. And it says, verse 10. Verse 10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that right. everyone may receive the things done in this body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So regardless of what you did in this life, don't let any pastor ever tell you that you don't need works to get into this kingdom. Because we're looking at the epistle of Paul. He's preaching to the Gentiles after Jesus has died, brothers and sisters. He's died. He's resurrected. He's gone back to the right hand of the Father. Yet, Paul is getting this point across to the Gentiles. Listen. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, like I said, this is going to tie into the first and second resurrection. And it says that everyone may receive the things done in his body. So, so much, like I said, so much for your pastor telling you, you don't need to have works. Because apparently, when you do resurrect, God is going to, God is going to look at you, and you're going to stand before him, and he's going to, because he's going to have the books open, we're going to read that. He's going to go down a list of the things you've been doing. And, more, it's a higher possibility that you're good may not outweigh your bad. But you want that though. That's why it says that if you're living, there's hope for you. Because if you're living, you can do what's necessary to get out of this ultimate death. The lake of fire. 
Because when you get judged, it's going to be according to what you did, whether it be good or bad. So while you're living, you want to have this opportunity to get yourself together and go according to what the book says is right. Go according to what the Lord says is good. Because that's what he's going to judge you out of. He told you good and bad. So you should take it upon yourself to be like, well, if he is the one who decides what is good, let me figure out what he considers to be good. So then I don't go by my own understanding. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm not smoking. I'm not drinking. You know what I'm saying? I go to church every Sunday. That may be considered good according to the world. But is that what the Bible says? Because if it's not what the Bible says, and the book is what tells you what is good, if it doesn't line up, then your bad is still accumulating, and your good isn't growing. It's not, it's, it's not, it's not catching up. That's something we have to understand, brothers and sisters. We're going to be judged by the Lord. So the Lord, the one who died for your sins, because it says right here, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's the one who's going to be doing the judgment. So that same one who went and died for your sins is going to be the one to say, listen, you didn't do what I asked you to do, and the lake of fire you go. So be mindful of that, brothers and sisters. Do not be deceived. That's why you got to be really thinking about this. Which resurrection will I end up in? And we're going to elaborate on that some more. So from here, we're going to turn to Job chapter 14. Because Job has some understanding on it also. Job chapter 14. Because we got we have to take out of the men, we have to remove ourselves out of the mentality that once we die, we just go to heaven, go to heaven. Like that's our home goal. People want to say when you're at a funeral, you ask somebody's home go. But how does that make sense? Like the Lord, he told you himself, no man has ascended up to heaven except the one who came down from heaven. That's himself because he came from heaven. But man, where did we come from? It tells you in Genesis chapter 2. The Lord, he took it. He took man out of the dirt and water. Really, do? he just breathed into us the breath of life. All we are is some dirt, some clay, brothers and sisters. That's our home going. Once we die, we go back to the dirt. That's, that was a punishment he gave to Adam, right? He says, from dust thou art, and dust thou shalt thou return. Right? So we can't just make up in our own imaginations things that is comforting to us. We have to accept the reality. And then prepare ourselves for what is to come so we don't end up where we don't want to be. Because if we're not preparing ourselves for these resurrections that are going to take place... Chances are, you're not going to get into the one that you want to end up in. But Job chapter 14, we're going to pick it up at verse 10. What's that? Verse 10. When you get there, go ahead. But man dieth and wasted the way. Yea, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? That's a really good question. It says, but man dieth and wasteth the way. Like, we ain't nothing, brothers and sisters. Our life is evanescent. Like you read in the chapter, it says, uh, man is born and full of, it says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. It's few days. Because you got to think about it from the perspective of the Lord. Like he lives in eternity. So if he's been here since the beginning of time, what's 70 years to him? That's nothing. Man, but man dieth and wasteth the way, yea. Man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Does he go to heaven? What's it say? As the waters fell from the sea, and flood, and the flood decayed and dried up. It says, as the waters fell from the sea, and the flood decayeth and dried up. So think about it in this perspective. Like, you see, when you're at the beach, right, and the ocean currents start rising up to the sand, what they do? They go right back down. Just like, man, we raise up from the dirt. We're going right back down, brothers and sisters. As the waters fell from the sea, and flood decayeth and dryeth up. Like, this, it'll rain down. Like, this house right here that I'm living in right now, it'll rain. And what'll happen? It'll flood down here, like, really minute-wise, though. But what'll happen? Give it a couple, give it a day or two, it look like nothing even happened. Because it dry, it, it, the flood decayeth and dryeth up. Go ahead. 
So man lieth down and riseth not. It says, so man lieth down and goes up to heaven? Lieth down and riseth not. It says, so man lieth down and riseth not. You ain't going nowhere, brothers and sisters. We, like, we can't deny the punishment that God put onto the creation. He said, we are going to die. And that's exactly what happens. It says, so man lieth down and riseth not. We're not getting back up, brothers and sisters. It's not, I died and then boom, I'm in heaven chilling with, you know, the angels and God. Like, really think about it. When we go to heaven, what are we doing there? Like, I, growing up, I always had a question. We going to heaven? Yeah. But what, what, what are we doing there? They can't give you that answer. Because it's so vague, it don't really make sense. Because that's not where we're meant to be going. Like, the Lord, it's not in the Lord's plan for us to go into heaven. Really, that's Satan's agenda. He said he wants to go back to heaven. So when people would say that, really, who are they quoting? It's Satan. And they don't even know. But it says, so man lieth down and riseth not. Go ahead. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not wake, nor be rised out of their sleep. It says, till the heavens be no more. Because, yeah, we don't rise up that very moment once we die. But there is a time when we will get up. It says, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake. Why is he referring this to sleep? Because that's really what it is, brothers and sisters. Once we die, we're just in the ground sleeping. Because we're going to get right back up. Like, when you go to sleep, you're practicing the resurrection. Because you go to sleep, you don't know what's going on around you. In reality, you may have a dream. I'm not saying you dream when you're dead. But when you're asleep, you just comatose. And then, boom, your body knows to wake up. You know? But... We're going to read a little bit more about that also. But it says, they shall not awake, nor raise out of their sleep. Like, you're, on, you're asleep. You're not getting up. Go ahead. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. Right. So it says, and thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. Because at the end of the times and the end of the world, when the Lord is getting ready to get back, it's going to be a very troublesome time. You read in Matthew chapter 24, it talks about the great tribulation that's going to take a, that's going to take place. And then it says, soon out, it says, you know, right after the great tribulation, that's Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, I believe. It says, after the great tribulation, shall the sign of the Son of Man appear. So that's when the Lord gets back, right after the great tribulation. He ain't going to rapture you off to heaven. No, you have to endure, brothers and sisters. And that's why and that's why Job is referencing. He says, listen, oh thou oh that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. He's dead at this point, but he's like, man, hide me. I don't want to endure that. I don't want to experience that. He got now Job got some understanding here. It says that thou wouldest keep me secret until that wrath be passed. Go ahead. That thou would have appoint me a set time and remember me. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me like remember me in the grave and this is set time is a very it's something we're going to learn about very shortly verse 14 if a man die shall he live again and he's asking the same question again brothers and sisters if a man dies will he live again go ahead all the days of my appointed time will i wait so he's waiting for an appointed time what is that appointed time Till my change comes. Till his change comes. Because at this time that we all do resurrect, those who are following the Lord, there's going to come a change in the body. Like the ultimate plan of the Lord is that, listen, yeah, we died, and really we're supposed to live forever. But this mortal body can't live forever. That's why we, we go we go 30 years, we try to play basketball, we realize we ain't, we ain't balling like we used to no more. That's just 30 years in. You know what I'm saying? We still a baby to God. Really think about that. If he lives in eternity, we infants in the eyes of the Lord. And we killing ourselves. Really, why? Because man sinned. And sin came across the whole entire creation. And what is the wages of sin? Death. But, though we die, and Jesus has died and took death off the table for us, now it says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Because the Lord is going to, he has set a time for his people to get this shackle of 
mortal coils or this body, this flesh and blood body to be taking off of us. He set a time for that. And what we're going to learn that is, is the first resurrection, brothers and sisters. That's what we should be shooting for. Because Job, right here, he knows about it. And right now, if you didn't know there was a first resurrection and a second resurrection to begin with, guess what? You don't have Job confidence that you're getting into the first resurrection. I don't have Job confidence that I'm getting to the re first resurrection. But that's what we should be building ourselves up for. Like Daniel is, like Noah is, like Moses, like you read in Hebrews 11, it gives you a list of people, like Abraham, you know, it says that these people died without receiving the promise, but they're going to get it when they resurrect, at that first resurrection. That's what you want to aim for, that's when you're going to, you're going to learn, but we're going to reign with Christ for a thousand years, with the Son, brothers and sisters, but it says, thou shalt, oh, it says, for if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. And that's what we should be aiming for, brothers and sisters. We should be aiming for that first resurrection. Go ahead. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Th thou shalt call, and I shall answer thee. Like when you go to sleep every night. Most of us, we probably work early in the morning. What we do, we got an alarm clock. And guess what? Mm-hmm. Mm, mm. What we do, we wake up. We practice in the resurrections every single day, brothers and sisters. But this is the ultimate waking up. Because death is likened on to sleep. And then when the Lord calls, you're going to wake up. And when you wake up, if you wake up at the first resurrection, you're going to have that change. You're going to be able to live forever. It's going to come with great benefits. You're going to get into the kingdom of God. If you get into that first resurrection. And we'll learn about the second resurrection shortly too. But from here let's turn over to our next scripture. Which is John chapter 3. Because there is nothing we could have done ourselves. To have this chance at everlasting life. John chapter 3. When you get there verse 16 you can go ahead and read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we're talking about the father here. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Go ahead. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. So if you believe on the son, you won't have to die. And think about it. We're dying left and right every day. Does that make this, this promise void? No. Because what we're talking about is that ultimate death. The Lord is going to spare you from the death, one, in the lake of fire. Instead, you can live forever. Go ahead. But have everlasting life. But have everlasting life. That's the promise that you can get if you believe on the Son. Because the Lord, because the Father sent Him. And then He died for us. But if you don't believe in Jesus, because you got to be mindful of something, Jesus... He's that Passover lamb. Like in John chapter 1, John looked at Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Why? Because you think about in the old times, they slayed a lamb. They slayed an animal for the sins. Because some blood had to be shed. But that was pointing all the way to when Jesus got here. And then he would die for your sins. And he would die. And it said, in, you know, his blood. Blood was shed for the remission of sins. And it's for all people. Anybody who wants to believe, they have an opportunity to get this everlasting life. But you got to believe. And if you don't believe that this man, because think about it, man who was the one who brought, who brought death onto the table. So it's got to be man to take it off. No bloods of bulls and goats going to do it. It had to be a man. So you had to believe on him. And if you don't, then you're still in your sins. So that's what I don't understand about these people. I, I, you know, there's this Muslim guy I know. He sold me two of my cars. You know, we talk about the Bible. And he don't want to tell me, yeah, you know, Islam is the way. But when did Muhammad die for your sins? Hmm. Like, if you want to use the Bible to find your identity, and that's what they do. But then say it's corrupt. Oh, you need to use the Quran. Like, if the Bible's corrupt, throw the whole thing away. 
You don't even exist. Throw the whole book away. Don't get it twisted. Let's be real now. But, say the Quran was valid and it's not. If, if Muhammad is valid, and then who, when did he die for your sins? It don't talk about that nowhere. So you're still in your sins because sins, you don't believe in Jesus. To, to, to Islam, Jesus was just another prophet. To Islam, Jesus didn't even die on the cross. He didn't even die on the cross. What happened? He just, the Lord took him off the cross because it was too hard for him. And Judas died in his place. Like, that's what they believe. So, you need to believe in Jesus or you're not going to get this everlasting life, brothers and sisters. Don't play with God. He sent his only son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. Everlasting life, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Oh, you can't condemn me, brother. You can't tell me I have to keep no law. Jesus died. He said he ain't come to condemn me. That's 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 what they that's what they say when they when they read that. You know, it says, "For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved." Like that's a big word that people overlook. The word "might." People don't think about that. It says, "For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world." But that through the world, that th but that the world through him might be saved. So if you might be saved, then you might not be saved at the same time, brothers and sisters. And that's predicated on something that we're going to read about right now. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Right. If you believe on him, you're not condemned, brothers and sisters. So we're not talking about the Buddhists. We're not talking about the Islam, the Confucius, the flying spaghetti monster, because they ate this and want to mock the Bible. Like they already Satan already got them. And that's so sad. Cause they wanna the, the world believes you can get to God any kind of way. And then they try to take God away from Christianity and say, you know, you just you just need to believe in a higher power. No. That's not how it works, brothers and sisters. You have to believe in Jesus. Because God is Jesus. That's a lesson for another day, though. But it says, He that believeth on him is not condemned. But guess what? But he that believeth not is condemned already. So if you don't believe in Jesus, guess what? You're already screwed. You can go ahead and just throw the towel in. Because if you don't believe in him, you condemn. There's no everlasting life on the table for you, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He's not going to acknowledge the Son of God. The one who died for your sins in order to get death off the table. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation. And this is the condemnation. Like, Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn you. You are absolutely correct. I agree with you 100%. But guess what? This is the condemnation. See, if you had kept reading, you would have understood something. You put a you put the yoke of iron on your own neck. Go ahead. That light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light. It says that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light. So, Jesus came, died for his sin, brought light into the world, show you how to live your life according to the law, statute, and the commandments. That's why he told you Matthew chapter nineteen, talking to this man. He says. You know, what should I do to keep to get everlasting life? That's what he that's what the man asked him. That's a really good question. What do I need to do? Peace brother Asa. He says, What do I need to do to get everlasting life? What did Jesus said, he said, keep the commandments. Is that so hard? It tells you in the Bible the commandments are not grievous. But then you got false prophets out here saying that if you the saint Satan's trying to get you to keep the law. Because you know he knows if you keep the law you're gonna sin. Like, really? That he's preaching you another Jesus, another spirit, another gospel. The Lord was telling you to keep the, the commandments. God, Satan don't want you to keep the commandments. Because keeping the commandments is obeying God. And that's Satan's objective from day one, to, to get you to disobey God.
That's why when Eve went, to, that's when he spoke to Eve. He's like, you know, then did God say you could eat from any tree? He's like, he was like, yeah, we can eat from any tree except the one in Miss Miss Cigar. He's like, ah. he said, he was like, if we do, we're gonna die. He's like, ah, you're not gonna die. You're just gonna know good and evil. You'll become like God. And what happened? He tricked him. How do I know? Go to the go to the cemetery. There's your evidence right there. You've been dying ever since. But it says, and this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. So Jesus came and gave you the opportunity, and you said, No, I'm straight. I want to live how I want to live. I don't want to live according to your rules and regulations, Jesus. And really all he's telling you is don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Honor your mother and parents. Don't have any other gods before me. Don't, don't, you know, don't put my name in vain. Keep my Sabbath day. Simple things, but we say, no, I'm good, I don't need it. I do, I'll do what I need to do. And then think that, you know, when we die, we, 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 we are all right with God. You don't know God. You really don't, because in 1 John chapter 2, it tells you. It says, we, hereby we know that we know God because we keep his commandments. He that saith he knows God and don't keep his commandments, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's facts, brothers and sisters. 1 John chapter 2. But it says, and this is a combination that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because what? Their deeds were evil. Their deeds were evil, brothers and sisters. You, you you live in wickedness, you're seeking after wickedness, guess what? You don't want to come to the light. Why not? For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. You hate the light. You can't stand the light. So you're going to come to, you know, find preachers that's going to, you know, hearken to what you want to hear. You're going to have preachers say, you know, it's okay to be a homosexual. He's going to say the Lord loves you no matter what. Come as they're gonna say, "Come as you are," but the Bible, not in one verse, said, "Come as you are," not one time. And, they, and people in the in the at the in the uh, in the audience are sitting there thinking that he's quoting the Bible. Nope. That's that's the precepts of men. That's the commandments of men, brothers and sisters, not the commandments of God. But it says, "For everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light." Go ahead. Neither cometh to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be reproved. It says, For every man, every one that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds be reproved. Should be reproved. Like, they don't want to get corrected. They feel as if they're straight. They don't need any form of correction. That's what the book is for. It's for instruction. It's for correction. It's to rebuke. Is to make you wise unto salvation, brothers and sisters. But we throw the book away and create our own doctrine. We don't need to keep the commandments of God. We don't need to keep the Sabbath day. Instead, we go to church on Sunday. We don't need to keep the feast days. Instead, I'm going to go have Christmas and Easter, which have nothing to do with God. You know what I'm saying? I know, you know, they try to tell you, oh, well, since they don't want to keep the law and... First John chapter 3 tells you that sin is breaking the law, and they tell you you don't have to keep the law. Now they got to make up their own form of sin. Oh, well, now smoking and drinking is a sin. Well, shoot, if sin is a, if, sm if drinking is a sin, well then, Jesus, they call him a wine bibber. Man, if he's sinning, then you're already in the lake of fire. You need to be mindful of what you're really saying. You can't make your own righteousness, brothers and sisters. Because I'm going to let you know right now, smoking and drinking is not a sin. It's really not. Because breaking the law is sin. You can't read that anywhere. Being a drunkard, that's something you need to get into subjection, of course. But it says, For everyone that doeth evil, hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. You don't want to get corrected. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Right, so if you want to do right, you're going to get corrected. Because the Lord going to correct him now. You know what I'm saying? He he says he he chastises those he loves. So even though you know you get baptized, stop believing in Jesus, you start doing the right thing. He's like, listen, I ain't gonna kill you. I'm still gonna get you for the things you did in the past. So he'll be like, come on, you're gonna be all right. Bow. 
But it's going to be all right. You're going to get through this like you got through the other one. Bow. Remember what you did last time? Bow. you still going to get it. But it's all about getting and taking the correction. Go ahead. That his deeds may be made manifest that they will rock in God. Let's turn over to our next one, which is... gonna give us an opportunity to get out of the lake of fire you know to get us into that first resurrection but there's another resurrection out there also we're gonna turn over to Daniel chapter 12 we're gonna read one verse here verse 2 Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2 when you get there go ahead and read and many of them that slept in the dust of the earth shall awake give me one second Sorry about that, Facebook. <clears throat> Back to what we're saying. Now that Jesus has died for our sins, he gives us opportunity to end, either end up in one resurrection or the other. And we're going to learn about the second one today. Because not everybody's going to end up in this first resurrection, which is what he should be aiming for. So Daniel chapter 12, we're going to read one verse here, verse 2. Go ahead and read, please. And many of them that slept in the dust of the earth shall awake. What? It says, many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall what? Awake. So, you, like I said, brothers and sisters, we're not dying going to heaven. The Bible across the board, from Genesis to Revelation, is letting you know the same thing. Once you die, you just go back to the dust. In the Bible, God likens death to sleep. Because we're going to wake up. Now, we saw in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that we all got to appear before the judgment seat of Christ and we're going to be judged according to everything we did in this body, whether it be good or bad. And that's scary. For people to not hearken into the understanding of the Bible and think that they're straight with God, that he's your personal savior. Well, if that's the case, hey, I'm letting you know right now, you don't want to play with that. Because you got people in the Old Testament like Nadab and Abihu. These were elders in Israel. The Lord knew them by name. But one day they decided to offer a strange fire, a strange sacrifice to the Lord. That same moment they died. God killed them on the spot. And he, he's basically telling Aaron, get over it. Seeing his sons die, he's like, man, get on with, get on with, the, with the rituals. You, got, you know what you got to do. Get over it. Don't even cry about it. Move on. So, don't get it twisted. Like I told you, we're going before the judgment seat of Christ. So, the same person who died for your sins, listen, because man loved darkness rather than light, he's going to be the same one to throw you in the lake of fire, brothers and sisters. Because you did not listen to the gospel, which was repent. Just like he's telling to that woman that touched his garment to be whole again. He said, you know, your faith had made you whole again. But guess what? Sin no more. That's what he told her. Sin no more. So we need to learn to sin no more and let our good outweigh our bad so we can end up in this first resurrection. But guess what? What happens to the sin? But guess what? There's another resurrection to look forward to, look forward to also. It says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Go ahead. Some to everlasting life. Some to everlasting life. Guess what? You're going to get into that kingdom. But guess what? And some to shame and everlasting contempt. Some to shame and everlasting contempt. That don't sound too good, brothers and sisters. This sounds like there's really no gray area. Like there's no, I'm going to just chill in purgatory. You know, and my, my, my loved ones that's alive right now, they can pay my way into heaven. No, that's not how it works. You're asleep, and then guess what? And it's really, when you're asleep, you don't know what's going on. You don't even know when you fall asleep. So guess what? You don't really know when you die. Like, yeah, something might be coming your way, boom, you're dead. But guess what? That very next moment, because technically you're asleep, guess what? That very next moment, bow. you either in the first resurrection, or you're in the second. That's why it's better to be a living dog than a dead lion, brothers and sisters. You got the hope. To get yourself together and do what is necessary to get into that first resurrection. 
where you get everlasting life. Because if you don't, guess what? Chances are you're going to resurrect to everlasting contempt. Everlasting, or to some, some to shame and everlasting contempt. There's nothing good about that, brothers and sisters. That's something we have to accept. So from here we're going to turn over to Psalms chapter 1. Because I got to throw Psalms in there. But we got to be mindful of something. The Lord don't just, you, you can't just think that God is love and I can just live however I want to and the Lord will accept me. That's not how it works. If y'all want to switch off. You know, like, it don't work that way. God said, like, the Lord is labeling people here. Psalms chapter 1, pick it up at verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. It says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Guess what? If God loved everybody, he wouldn't be labeling some people as ungodly. No. If you're ungodly, that means the Lord is displeased with you, brothers and sisters, because of your actions. He's looking down on the people on this earth, and some of these people are just not up to par. Why? Because these de their deeds are evil. And that's what they love. They love darkness rather than light. They want to live in that life of sin and think that on their deathbed, oh, I'm going to find the Lord. Nah. It's not going to work that way. You hear me on your deathbed? Guess what? You chose the path you were, you wanted to be on. There's no switching up at the last second, brothers and sisters. You chose. That's why it says they 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 wanted to live in darkness, lest their de their you know their actions be reproved. Like you didn't want to get corrected. Instead, you thought you could just live it out. Nope, it's not gonna work that way. But it says, "Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly." Nor standeth in the, in the way of sinners. Someone has to fit that. Like, we're not perfect. Some of us trying to be perfect, but someone's got to be the sinner. And if you, are, if, you, if you are that blessed man who's trying to live righteous, guess what? You don't, you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. You don't stand in the way of sinners. You know what? Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But what do you do instead? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His deli delight is in the what of the Lord? In the law of the Lord. In the law of the Lord. Why do you think you need to be walking in the law of God? Because the law is that light. I'm going to read this to you real quick. You don't have to go there. Proverbs chapter 6. Because I, I don't, I don't want to. Boom. Right there. Proverbs chapter, 20, Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 23. It says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And reproof of instructions are the way of life. This is what you need to guide yourself into that perfect, perfect light. This book is going to do that. And it's the book that shows you the law of God, how to live righteous. And the law shows you how to love your neighbor as thyself. And how to love the Lord with your heart, mind, and soul. With every fiber of your being, brothers and sisters. Keep going. And in his law... Don't he meditate day and night? And he's telling you, this blessed man, guess what? In his law, does, not only does not only is the law his delight, but it says also, and in his law, does he meditate both day and night? This word is on his brain on a regular day basis, on a hour to hour basis. He's thinking about this law. Really, why? Because if you think it contrary to the law, hey. The only thing that can get in there is sin, brothers and sisters, the wicked thoughts. That's how they come up, because you ain't, you ain't thinking about the word. But you just meditate on this law both day and night. That's what you need. You need this book on your mind at all times. Because if you don't have this book on your mind, that's how Satan can creep in. You know what I'm saying? He'll come at any avenue. Listen, we probably all lived a long life of sin before we came into the word of God. So he know he know he knows what you like, and what you have to give up to seek after the Lord. He's gonna put that right in front of your face, brothers and sisters. So you need to meditate on this word, on this law, day and night, brothers and sisters. Now we know we may not be able to, cause we cause you know this time we gotta work, gotta labor, got other things we gotta deal with. But at the same time, one way or another, you need to be meditating on this word of God, brothers and sisters. And what will happen? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Like, you're not going to be a tree. 
No, I'm not going to say that yet. But it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Think about it. Tree. Plants need water to survive. Dungeon family. <laughs> <laughs> they said the Hebrew dungeon family. <laughs> that was Nate. <laughs> but it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. Think about it. Trees need water to survive. But this tree, as he said it right next to the riverbank. He got water right there. He never going dry. That's what it's like when you meditate on the word day and night. That's 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 the, that's what you need, right? It said in verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and his law, and in his law that he meditate day and night. So you constantly Listen, it told you man can't live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Guess what they talk? Guess what they were referring to? This whole, really, the Old Testament was in existence only when they met, when Jesus made that statement. But now we got the whole book, so we need every word of God here. And once we have every word of God, we eating this whole word. Guess what? We, listen, it says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and bringeth forth his fruit in season. So that tree bringing forth good fruit, guess what? Man can be like in the trees also. So what is our fruit? Our actions. Once we have this word of God in our mind and we're, and we're eating this consistently, we can be operating on a God, like God. Because guess what? This is the righteousness of God, this law. So guess what? If we operate by it, we can be acting like God because guess what? God is righteous. He don't steal. He don't lie. I mean, he killing make war and just and righteousness because listen we we uh, listen we deserve that but at the same time like he says he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of waters and bringeth forth his fruit in his season we're going to be constantly we're going to be connected to the word at all times but guess what if you're not dealing with this word on a regular day basis what's going to happen verse four yeah verse three the middle of it. his leaf shall his leaf also shall not wither Oh. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Right. This is also part of when you are dealing with this word. But verse 4. The ungodly are not so. However, if you are not dealing with the word, it says, and it says the ungodly are not so. So we saw what it's like to be dealing with the word. To be meditating on the law day and night. It says the ungodly are not so. But what? But I like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. So think about, you know, when you see them old Western movies, and the wind be blowing that little ball of, you know... Tumbleweed. 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 Yeah, they know more words than me. So that tumbleweed, that stuff is dry. Think about them trees in the desert. Yeah, the desert got some form of trees, but they dry. The, the strongest wind, boom, branches breaking off. There's no nutrients in that tree. It's not getting. It's not receiving water necessary in order to survive. You'd spiritually dead, brothers and sisters, if you ain't in this word. And guess what? You meditating this word, you being in this book, and producing fruit and having your good outweigh your bad. That's what's gonna shoot you into the first resurrection. And believing in Jesus, of course. But if you don't. It says the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which 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 the wind driveth away. Go ahead. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. They're not gonna have a chance, brothers and sisters. It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. What? what? Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Listen, where the righteous are, listen, there's gonna be a great divide. We're gonna read a little bit more about that divide also. But it says. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Listen, it's not going to mix. It told you in John chapter 1. It said that light, you know, darkness comprehended it not. And if you and you get some more understanding, you know, it can't occupy in space together. Like, you can't mix light and darkness. Like, you can be in a room full of darkness. You flip on a match, you're going to be able to see because the light is going to get rid of all that darkness. But instead, since you want to be living in darkness, which is also living in wickedness, guess what? You can't be you can't be living with righteousness. 
Now the Lord is going to separate it right then and there. You ain't going to be able to sit in the congregation of the righteous. Verse 6. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. But what? But the way of the ungodly shall perish. The way of the ungodly shall perish. Like I said, you ain't going to stand a chance. And we saw that in Daniel chapter 12. Says some are gonna wake up to everlasting life. Some are gonna wake up to everlasting, to shame and everlasting contempt. And guess what? You're gonna perish. But of course we're gonna live forever. We're gonna read about that. But that perishing, or you perish, guess what? You're gonna end up in the lake of fire, the ultimate death. So you gotta be mindful of that. Which resurrection will you end up in? The first or the second? And your actions predicate that. That's a scary thing. When your pastor been telling you all your life, all you need to do is believe in Jesus. You don't need any form of work. But then the Lord out of his mouth told you, listen, I'm going to judge you according to your word. And we're going to read that multiple times throughout this class, brothers and sisters. So from here, let's turn over to our next scripture, which is Revelation chapter 20. We're going to learn about the first resurrection in detail this time. What's going to What events is going to take, take place when the Lord is getting getting back. Revelation chapter 20. We're going to pick it up at verse 4. And what's happening is. <clears throat> once the Lord gets back. And you know the, the angels do their destruction. Right after. You know Michael the archangel. Well, I'm not going to say Michael the archangel. But what's it called. Saying is going to be bound up for a thousand years. And during that thousand years. It's going to be a thousand years of peace. And we're going to learn why. But in verse 4, what happened? <clears throat> and I saw the throne, and they sat upon them, and, ju and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus mm. and for the word of God. So, evidently, walking this life isn't like running through the meadow. No, because it says, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon and. They sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. So they were given the op, the power to give judgment. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So some people are going to have to die for this word of God. That's another class, though. But we can't just we can't just ignore this and think that everything's dandy when it comes to serving Christ. Hey, it tells you that the people who follow Christ, you're going to have to suffer perse persecution, and that time's going to come. Because eventually they're not going to like the fact that, you know, these false prophets are getting exposed. So, hey, we're going to have to decide. But it says, And judgment was given to them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had, go ahead, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So they did not take the mark of the beast. They didn't pledge allegiance to Satan because they're going to come a time, brothers and sisters. Listen, a man is going to exalt himself above all that is called God. Now be mindful, it's all that is called God because not everybody is God. There's only one in true and living God. But people think Buddha is God. Some people think Allah is God. But guess what? This person, he's going to exalt himself and say, listen, you believe in those people? They ain't nothing. I'm God. He's going to be like, listen, I'm the captain now. That's it. But we got we to gotta stand for it. You know, listen, I'm not going to take your mark if I don't make it to the wilderness, of course, which is what I'm in for. That's another lesson, of course. But it says, Neither have received his mark upon his their foreheads or in their hands. But in, and what is the reward for this? And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So that thousand year period where Satan is bound up, those who are going, who, you know, stay faithful to the Lord, basically, they are going to, they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. There's going to be a thousand years of peace because Satan isn't out here running amok. He, the tempter is not in people's ear like, you know you want to steal that. You know you want to lay with that woman. Even though y'all ain't married, blah, 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 so forth and so forth. But if you were following the Lord, that's the reward you're going to get. You're going to reign with Christ a thousand years. Verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not until the thousand years were finished. So, some are going to resurrect. 
from the dead. But it says the rest of the dead, it says, live not again until the thousand years were finished. So, hey, everyone that dead, like I said, did not make it to his first resurrection. But that's what we need to be aiming for. Dead or alive. We need to be aiming for this res first resurrection. Because not everybody is going to get it, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. This is the first resurrection. This is a first resurrection. Like I said, this is the one you want to be aiming for. That's why you got to ask yourself every day. Listen, which resurrection am I going to aim for? Do I have that Job confidence? Do I have that Abraham confidence? Like, there's plenty of people in this book that we read about who died, and guess what? They're going to receive that promise. But does that mean you're going to, because the bar is set pretty high. Because it said Job was a perfect and upright man. It said he was perfect. So, so much for people saying you can't live a perfect life. You can. There's plenty of examples of people who live without, who, who live a perfect life. And it's according to what God measured to be perfect. So don't don't be deceived. You got to do something. Because guess what? These people, it says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Hey, if it wasn't predicated on anything, why didn't they get up in the first resurrection? We should all be up in the first resurrection. We should all be reigning with Christ if we don't got to do nothing to please the Lord. Evidently, they didn't do what was necessary in order to get up in it. But it says, those who, you know, were beheaded and so forth, listen, they reigned with Christ a thousand years. And it says, this is the first resurrection. This is the one you want to aim for. And evidently, not everybody's going to be beheaded in order to be in the first resurrection because Job wasn't beheaded. You can't, I mean, you can't read that, but listen, like, Abraham wasn't beheaded, but he's going to get there. But it's all about, it's all predicated on pleasing the Lord, dealing with the law. Because it's in the light. Listen, that should be a delight. You meditate on, it, meditate on it day and night. Verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. And why is that? On such the second death hath no power. So if you get into this first resurrection, listen, you're good. You're not going to end up in that lake of fire. Because you, you, you proved yourself worthy to the Lord. You did what was necessary in order to get into the kingdom. And ultimately, you're going to live forever at that point if you make it to the first resurrection. That's why you'll be blessed. Because on such, the second death had no power. And that second death is the lake of fire, like I said. Go ahead. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. You're going to reign with the Lord a thousand years. Go ahead. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. So when the when that thousand years is over, Satan's gonna come back on the scene. He's gonna run amok for a short time, and then once once he thinks he's about to, you know, get one over on God, the Father's gonna rain down on him from heaven and take him out. Boom! Into the lake of fire you go. Because listen, that's that's where you hey, listen. You knew you, that's where you're going to end up. Now now it's time. Go ahead, go. After he's, now he's in the lake of fire, guess what? Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. Listen. Like I said, we all got to stand up here before, we all got to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now we're looking at it and it says, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, whose face from... And from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, there was found no place for them. Go ahead. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Like I said, like we read in Ecclesiastes, it don't matter if you're wicked or you're righteous. It don't matter if you're rich or you're poor. It don't matter if you're a celebrity, if you was a nobody. Listen, you're going to have to stand before the Lord and answer for everything you did in your body, whether good or evil. Keep going. And the books were open. And the books were open. What and what else? And another book was open, which is the book of life. And you know what that book? Not only the book of life was open, but guess what? This book's gonna be open. Cause this book right here, this is where you read and find out you were living in sin. Like it says in Romans chapter seven, I I, I had not known lust till law said thou shalt not covet. 
So he's going to judge according to this book. And if you're not up to par, guess what? You're not going to make it, brothers and sisters. And I just lost my place, so I need to turn back. But I answered it. <laughs> Revelation 20. It says, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which was a book of life. Go ahead. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. According to their faith. According to their works. Uh, like, we, we saw that we need to believe on Jesus, right? But at the same time, it's also telling you, And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You know why? Because your works exhibit your faith. Listen, I used to work at a marketing job and I was not making no money. Did I stay there? No. I had no faith in that job. So what did I do? I didn't work there. Facts. Just like the job, you you, you know they're going to pay you that paycheck every week or every two weeks. So what do you do? You go, you clock in, you do your time, you clock out, you go home, and guess what? You come back the next day. They ain't pay you yet, but you came back the next day. You came every day you were scheduled, and guess what? Boom. Your reward came. That's your works. But you have faith in that paycheck. You need work. He told you in James, faith without works is dead. So you can say you believe in Jesus all day, but Jesus told you also, why call me why call me Lord Lord and not do the things that I say? Listen, you believe me, you would have believed me when I told you that whoso keepeth the commandments and teaches those teaches them to do them, listen, you'll be great in the kingdom. But whosoever breaketh them and teaches others to break them, listen, you're gonna be least in the kingdom of heaven. And to be least in the kingdom doesn't mean you're gonna be some shoe shiner. Nah. It don't mean you're gonna be the garbage pickup man. Nah. What it means is that you're gonna be in the lake of fire. You ain't even getting in. That's why you need to be mindful where you're going to end up and do what is necessary to get into that first resurrection. Because if you end up in the second one where you're getting judged, you know, before the great white throne of judgment, I'm not saying everybody here is going to end up in a lake of fire, but I don't want to have no 50-50 chance. So that's a big possibility I may not get in. And to burn for an eternity, brothers and sisters... Like, listen, it tells you, one uh, one thousand years to man is one day to the Lord. So after you've been burning for a thousand years in the lake of fire, you know man is impatient as you know what. He is impatient as you know what. And you've been burning for a thousand years, the Lord's going to be like, man, it's been a day. What you tripping about? What you tripping about, bro? Go on. Go on. You know what you did. You know why you're here. Go on. So you don't want to end up here. You don't want to play with God. You don't want to... Hey, you don't want to play your chances. You do not. Because there's a high probability you can end up in the lake of fire just because you're in this second resurrection. You should aim for the first one. Have hope. Be that living dog rather than that dead lion. And do what is necessary. To make your good outweigh your bad and end up in that first resurrection, brothers and sisters. Live perfectly according to the book, which is live without sin. And what is sin? Transgression of the law. Stop breaking the commandments of God. So from here we're going to turn over to... I think I just lost it. Hold on, I'll see here. From here we're going to turn over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. Good book saying all the same thing all across the board. There's no reason to, you know, think. Because people will be like, oh, well, the Old Testament says one thing, and then the New Testament says another. But that's not the case. Because if the if the, if it was contradicting one, is, one itself, then there's no point in even keeping the whole book. Might as well just throw it away. Because this this is this is this fits like a glove, the old and the new. So Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, and we're gonna pick it up at verse one. When you get there, go ahead and read, please. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the day while the evil days come not, 
nor the years draw nigh. So it says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Talk about talking about when you start getting old, brothers and sisters, you ain't gonna enjoy life like you did. So remember him in your youth. You want to start young serving the Lord when it's when it's sweet, when it's good. It's always gonna be good, of course. But don't wait till you're mad old to start seeking the Lord. Like I remember growing up, my cousins they'd be like, "Listen, man," because he'd be like, "You notice the deacons and all that? You know they old folks. So you know it's cool to just live out my life right now. Then when I get old, then I'm gonna you know worship God. Hey, you're not even promised that. You ain't promised tomorrow. You ain't promised the next hour." Because the Lord can snatch that breath of life out of you in an instant. Real talk. So don't play. It says, remember now that creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw not. When what? When thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Go ahead. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. Go ahead. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves. Right. You don't want to do this, like I said. You want to remember him in the youth. Not when the evil days, because when, when you start getting older, guess what? The keepers of the house, they shall tremble. Look at the old folks. You know what I'm saying? Hey, sonny. <laughs> but they, they be, you know, they be chill. It says when the strong men, like, you, you when you're young, you stood up tall, right? But once you get older, what you do? You start... Gotta get you a cane just to just to support you up, just to have your balance. You're getting old, you know what I'm saying. Do this while you're young. Don't don't play around and wait till you get older. You ain't gonna have pleasure in them days. It says the strong men shall bow themselves, and what else? And the grinders cease because there are few. Listen, you 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 listen. Your teeth stop falling out. Gotta get yourself with some some dentures just to chew and enjoy food. You know what I'm saying. You came to this world without teeth. You're gonna go out this world without them too. It, it seemed like for some people. Go ahead. And those that look out of the windows be darkened. Right. And those that look out the window be darkened. Like, you're going to start losing your eyesight for some people. You know, they start to get older. They do. They go blind. You know, some of them go deaf. Because your body ain't operating like it did in this prime. That's when the evil days start coming. Verse 4. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. When the sound of the of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the darkness. Go down to verse seven. Cause you're gonna cause you're gonna be experiencing all this stuff in your old age, right? But shortly after that, what happens? Then shall the dust return to the earth as as it was. Then shall the dust, cause that's what you really are. You dust. But it says, and thus shall the then shall the dust return to the earth. As it was. Dust thou art, God said, and thus shalt thou return. He said to Adam. Go ahead. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now we got a qualified spirit here. But it says, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. We're talking about that breath of life. Your, your, your physical body is going to go back to the ground. The thing that made you alive, that breath of life, we're going to snatch that up. It's going to go right back to him. It don't belong to you. You don't got no, you got no, you know, it's, it's not, uh, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for. I lost the word. But, like, you're not, you're not promised this. Like, people like, oh, it's my money, I need it now. Guess what? It's not your breath of life. And you can lose it any moment. But it says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now, you had all your lifetime to get your act together before God. And then once it once the time comes, the Lord's gonna snatch that breath. You're gonna die, but that's not the end of it, cause you're gonna wake up like we like we read. You're gonna wake up either in the first resurrection or the second one, and you're gonna be judged according to all your works. Come down to verse twelve. I mean, sorry, verse thirteen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Now we're gonna live this lifetime, but. Let's, you know, let's say the whole conclusion. Let's sum all things up. Even in this book, this right here can sum up everything written in this book, too. But it says, let's say the whole conclusion. Let's say the conclusion of the whole matter. Go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments. It says, fear God and keep his commandments. I ain't read nothing here about, you know, 
getting your 401 401ks, you know, saving up on your pensions, you know, investing in the stock market, getting the biggest house, having a $54 million jet to go preach the gospel. I didn't read that here. Now the last one, that's that that's foolishness. But you know, saving up money for your for your for your kids in the future, that's not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with being wise with how you live your life and you know, save stocking up for your kids and leaving an inheritance. But that shouldn't be coming before God. Because ultimately here's the conclusion of the whole matter. You need to fear God. Because if you fear God, listen, you're not going to undermine Him. You're not going to disobey Him because you know what He's capable of doing. Like I said, He's the one who died for your sins. But then on the flip side, He's going to be the same one to throw you in the lake of fire because you didn't do what He asked you to. Instead, after you got the understanding that He died for you, listen, you still live that wicked life because your deeds were evil and man loved, men loved darkness rather than light. They love walking contrary to God Rather than accepting his righteousness. Like it talks about Israel. It says, you know, they want to worship God. They got a zeal for God. But they go going out establishing their own righteousness. They never submit to the righteousness of God. Because they live according to how they think is right. And we can't do that, brothers and sisters. If he, this man is the one who's going to get us into the kingdom. Or throw us into the lake of fire. Listen, I'm going to try to figure out what, he, what, 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 what criteria is going by. Just like when you're in school and you're studying for a course, listen, if I'm studying anatomy, I'm not going to go get myself a physics book. I'm being real with you. If I'm studying anatomy, I'm not going to go get myself a physics book. Why? Because I can spend all that time studying that physics book. When I go take that anatomy test, I'm going to bomb it. Straight up. Because I wasn't prepared. So you need to prepare yourself according to what? He has said. So you need to fear God and keep his commandments. And why is that? For this is the whole duty of man. This is kind of the duty of man. This is the whole duty of you man. You don't really need to do this. This is the whole duty this of man. This is the whole duty of man, brothers and sisters. It don't get much clearer than that. We saw in Revelations, though, end of the book, it told you, according to your works, you're going to be judged. And the books were open. In another book, the book of life. And the men, they were judged out of those books according to your works. And then right here, he's telling you the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. So when you go before the Lord, what are you going to be able to say if you didn't keep his commandments? That was, your, that was your whole job. If that was your whole job, you can't go before the Lord and say, nah, you know, my pastor told me I didn't keep those. So I didn't do it. Lord tell you that was your whole duty. You literally just missed the whole point of this book. No disrespect, but you gotta be mindful of what you're what you what you're exposing yourself to as far as understanding, as far as knowledge goes. You need to get yourself together according to the Bible, according to the commandments and precepts of God, not the commandments and precepts of men. Verse 14. For God shall bring every word into judgment. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Same thing all across the board, brothers and sisters. He's going to be judging you according to your works. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So you better hope you're trying to get your act together, brothers and sisters. Because I don't want to end up in that second resurrection. I don't want to stand before the Lord and they and they literally going down the list of everything, every bad thing I did. Listen, I'm not perfect. I'm far from it. Now I got to understand, I'm trying to repent and do what is good in the sight of the Lord. Not live the way I want. Because if I live the way I want, listen, we saw what happens. You're going to wake up to shame and everlasting contempt. Like you're going to get embarrassed. and Like he's going to embarrass you for everything you did. And then he's going to throw you in the lake of fire. Like that, that sucks. Real talk. That's terrible. To tell me I live my life. Boom, I don't even know I'm dead. Then the next moment, boom, I'm right before the Lord. Then he's going to tell me every wrong thing I did. And then he's going to throw me into the lake of fire. Don't play with God. Which resurrection will you end up in? Be mindful of that. Peace, Brother Joseph.
we didn't we didn't go we didn't get to go out street preaching, so we decided to do a class instead. But from here, let's turn over to what was that? Let's turn over to Revelation chapter twenty-two. This is the very last chapter of the book. You know what I'm saying? Maybe God is maybe Jesus Christ isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever. Maybe once we got to the last book, He said, "You know what? I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna switch it up for everybody." I'm going to change the standard. Let's see if that's the case. Revelation chapter 22. Let's pick it up at verse 11. We get to go ahead and read. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Go ahead. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Yeah, just pick a side. Don't play with God. Just pick a side. You know what I'm saying? Don't be lukewarm. God wants you to be either hot or cold for him. So pick a side. Don't play. If you're going to be holy, be holy. If you're going to be unjust, be unjust. Do your thing. Just know there's something like, there's a there's a result for everything you do. There's a cause. For every cause, there is always an effect. Correct? So for every action you do, there's going to be a repercussion for it. And I'm not talking about karma. That people want to believe in you. Well, go ahead and believe in that. No, that's God busting you upside your head for disobeying him. That's facts. But it says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust. And he that which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Pick a side and stick with it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're, if you're being wicked, I pray you repent. Because he can, like it says, man, if you repent, all that wickedness he did in his past, listen, the Lord going to forget it. He's going to pardon you for all that so you can walk in newness of life. So, of course, if you want to repent, oh, I, I encourage you. And seek the Lord according to the faith of God. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 14 and 12. It says, here is the patient of the saints. Here are they which keep the commandments of God and the faith in Jesus. So do both. You need both. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. So after you've been living the lifestyle you have, and you got both of these kind of people in this world, of course, and you've been living this kind of lifestyle, it says, God is letting you know, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Oh, you think it's a reward? Like, oh man, I must be getting something good, right? Guess what? To give every man according as his work shall be. You ever heard of sanctions? Sanctions is when there's a repercussions, but it can be either good or bad. Like, you think you're getting a reward, right? Not necessarily. Listen, your reward can be the lake of fire. Like, listen, God be like, bravo. Man, you deserve this. Here you go. Lake of fire. Like, the Lord, listen, Santa Claus is fake. But the Lord going to give you some real coal. He's really going to give you something to burn with, brothers and sisters. Burning forever where the worms die not. Listen, the fire will not be quenched. You don't want to end up there. But it says, And behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me, giving every man according to his beliefs. His work. His works, brothers and sisters. Don't ever forget it. The Lord don't change. It's the same across the board. Did you believe in him? Yes. Well, guess what? If you believed in him, your actions have to reflect that, brothers and sisters. Verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's how we know we're talking about Jesus. That's how we know who we're talking about. We're talking about God. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Why that, is that? That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter, enter in through the gates into the city. And it's crazy for a man to tell you that it's saying that's trying. That's Creflo Dollar. I'm going to expose him right now because he's the one who said it. But he said. Satan is the one who's trying to get you to believe in keeping the commandments, brothers and sisters. When God just straight up told you, you a blessed man if you do this. Why? Because you may have right to the tree of life. Who's the tree of life? Jesus. And it says, and may enter into in through the gates into the city. We're talking about the kingdom of God. If you keep this commandment, simple thing, it tells you the commandments are not grievous. 
So if you can do that, listen, you have a chance of getting into the kingdom. That's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's not a complicated thing. Like, it's not no, I got to solve this Rubik's Cube type deal. It's not how many licks does it take to get to the center of a lollipop. It's really straightforward, brothers and sisters. Just endure. Keep these commandments. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into the great into the enter in through the gates into the city. So guess what? You keep these commandments, you're gonna be in that kingdom. You're gonna get up in that first resurrection. You don't gotta worry about the second resurrection, because if you make it into the first, it says the second death has no power on you. You're gonna be able to live forever. That's a wonderful thing. Let's turn over to oh, verse 15. For without are dogs, Go ahead. sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. It says, for without are dogs. You know who dogs are? Them greedy preachers. Who want to tell you the law is done away with, but then with that same mouth they tell you gotta, you got to tithe the money. But where did they get tithe their money from? The law. So you should be asking a preacher, preacher. If I don't got to keep the commandments, if I don't got to keep the law, why do you keep trying to get in my pockets? Why do you keep telling me to pay my tithes? The law is done away with. Stop, stop, stop playing with me, Pastor. You need to question it. But that's what these dogs are. They're greedy preachers and sorcerers. You know, dealing with that witchcraft and things to that effect. It says, and, and whoremongers. I did a class last week about the homosexuals. Listen. If you're a straight fornicator or you're a gay home fornicator, it don't matter. The Lord hated both. He hates both of it. So you need to keep it you need to keep it on the wraps or get married. And when I say married, I'm talking about a man and a woman. Not man with man or woman with woman. No, nah, get married according to the Bible standards. It says, for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Guess what, brothers and sisters? Jesus didn't die on December 25th. That fat old white guy is not coming down your chimney. He ain't on a sleigh being, you know, driven by reindeer that fly in the sky with one of them with a red nose that tried to save Christmas. Being real with him. So you better cut that lie out. Jesus did not resurrect on a Sunday. You better cut that lie out. Jesus did not come here to do away with the law. You better cut that lie out. You can't be falling for these tricks. Because they've been, listen, they've been, they've always been false prophets. Jeremiah talked about false prophets. Jesus talked about false prophets. He told you, beware of false prophets. That's the first warning he gave you according to the end of times. So, be not deceived. Get your act together. Get you a preacher according to the law, according to God's standards. It says, for without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, you not getting in. Let's turn over to our last scripture, which is <clears throat> Matthew 25. Matthew 25, when you get there, go ahead and pick it up at verse 25. Matthew 25, and pick it up at verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Right, so it says, when the Son of Man shall return, shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Go ahead. And before him shall be gathered all nations. You can read about this in uh, Zechariah chapter 14. The Lord's going to gather all the nations. He's going to deal with everybody that have been, you know, running amok on this earth. These these people with power. These kings. You know, in Psalms chapter 110, it tells you he's going to start, he's going to strike through kings. Like, he's tearing up. You know, because the father was talking to the son. In Psalms chapter 110, he told you, sit thou at my right hand so I make thy enemies thy footstool. So he's going to be coming back to be giving these people according to their works. They lived in wickedness, so guess what? They're gonna re their reward is going to be 
Literally death. He's going to come back and be killing a lot of people, brothers and sisters. It says, Before him shall he gather all nations. Go ahead. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And at this point, he's going to he's gonna make that dividing line. Boom. You either my sheep or you goat. Because you got to think about it. The sheep, they always, you know, walking after the, the shepherd. Goats, they, they stubborn. They do what they want. You know what I'm saying? You see those random pictures on Google. You see like you see them goats on the side of mountains just, just walking. Like what you what are you doing there? <laughs> what are you doing there? Cause they, they they ain't mindful of their shepherd, but the sheep are. They followed the Lord. So it says, And before him shall he gather all shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goat. Verse thirty three. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. So, listen. The sinner shall not sit in the congregation of the righteous. Like, you're not going to stand with us. Mm -mm. Lord ain't going to allow it. He's going to set it apart. Boom, right down the middle. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. Now, the people on his right hand, the sheep, they're going to be able to get into the kingdom of God. His sheep, though. You think the goats are going to get the same reward? Because it says, Then shall the king say unto them that was, that them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. You know what I'm saying? So, this group of people, they did what was necessary. And they're going to be able to inherit the kingdom of God. It says, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Verse 35. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. So, God is basically running down. Listen, you clothed me. This is God talking to these people. He said, listen, you clothed me. You fed me. You know, you visited me when I was in prison. You gave me drink. Saying all these things that they did unto God. And then the people, the sheep would be like, God, what did we do all this to you? We, we, I never seen you in prison. I never fed you. You know what I'm saying? You, you never physically did these things for the Lord. But then the Lord is going to respond. I'm not, we're not going to read all of it. The Lord is going to be, uh, jump down to verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. So the Lord said, like, when you did it to the poor, when you did it to people that were called considered little, you know, not like hide or anything, but people, you know, people that aren't acknowledged, people aren't, you know, thought of, poor, needy, people who actually needed help. Listen, so when you did it to them, guess what? You did it to me. And you know what's crazy? That's within loving thy neighbor as thyself. A commandment of God. The Lord show you how to be humble. How to be loving and kind. Like he, like the Lord is full of love and kindness. And charity. But the Bible, the word of God, shows you to do the same thing within his law. It's nothing new. When Jesus came into the flesh, he didn't change nothing. He just reminded us, hey, listen, this is how it should be. Y'all getting off track. I need to get y'all back on track to how it's supposed to be. And it says, then he shall, then it says, and the king as shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Verse 41. Then shall he say unto them on, on the left hand, Stop. Now the people on the right hand, they got such a great reward, right? Guess what happened to the people on the left? Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Dang, that's pretty cold. Like, he was just being so loving and soft hearted, like, yo, like, I love you guys. Come get this kingdom that was prepared for you from the kingdom, of, from the begin, from the foundation of the world. Like, you guys just took care of me. You know, y'all fed me, y'all gave me drink. You clothed me, you visited me in prison. You know what I'm saying? When you did it to the poor, guess what? You did it all to me. Think about that. That I know her. That same mouth is going to say, listen, ye cursed. 
Depart from me, you curse, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Like, you gotta think about it. Angels don't die. They live forever. So the Lord, he said, listen, you want to be like the angels? Guess what? I'm going to give you an everlasting body too, so you can endure the punishment that they got to endure. Because it was prepared for them. Man was never meant to die. But because we follow after Satan, guess what? We're going to get the same reward. He's dividing his sheep from his goat. What are you going to get in the first resurrection or the second? It's up to you, brothers and sisters. Jump down to... Jump down to verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So the choice is yours, brothers and sisters. Which resurrection will you end up in? Are you going to do what the Father says? Are you going to obey His word and end up in the first resurrection? Or are you going to want to play the Lord? You want to, you know, gamble with the Lord on the second? My advice to you, don't play with God. Choose life. I hope somebody got some understanding. Peace. Press finish. Press the finish button.